Now, a couple other important bits of jargon. Uh, we know what uh, sort of the required rate of return on a bond is. Uh, and related to that, we know what a coupon rate on the bond is. That is the fraction of the coupon payment over the face value of the bond. And the current yield of a bond is the coupon payment over the price of the bond. And remember, unless the bond trades at par, the face value is not equal to the price, so the current yield won't be the same thing as the coupon rate unless you have a par bond. And just as with the coupon rate, the current yield is also expressed as an annual value. Um, we will always take the sum of all coupon payments paid throughout the whole year as sort of the total coupon payment C in these examples. Now maybe the most fundamental measure of bond performance is yield to maturity. This is the one that gets talked about perhaps most frequently. Um, and this is the annual return on the bond, sort of like an annual percentage rate. It can be computed by essentially solving for the discount rate uh, per period and then annualizing. Now because technically we actually will have this idea of accrued interest, um, computing yield to maturity can be fairly tricky, uh, but the best way to uh, actually approach this is probably using the yield function in, in Excel. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's ignore accrued interest. Let's think about uh, sort of bonds that have just paid a coupon. Um, and let's calculate yields to maturity on simpler bonds. So let's look at the yield to maturity on an annual pay coupon bond. Now, this of course is a multiple payment security. This pays an annual coupon. At the end, it also pays your principal. Remember, you can represent this as the sum of an annuity plus a zero coupon that pays you the principal at the very end, or you can represent this as a sum of zero coupons, one occurring in each period. And if you think about it, uh, the yield to maturity is essentially just the internal rate of return, because by definition what it does is it sets the price equal to the present value of the cash flows. Just as, of course, the IRR uh, sets the NPV uh, equal to zero, meaning that the upfront investment, aka the price of a project, is equal to the present value of the cash flows resulting from it. So we can calculate the yield to maturity uh, exactly the same way that we calculate an IRR. Now, if we do, of course, represent the bond as a portfolio of zero coupons, uh, what can we do if somehow the price of the portfolio of zero coupons is different from the price of the bond itself? Well, uh, that actually that sets up the opportunity for arbitrage. Um, so let's look at an example of what that actually means. Um, generally, of course, the yield to maturity is just the rate that you will earn if you hold this bond to maturity. Uh, just as the IRR is the rate that you will earn um, if you stay invested in the project until it's maturity. So let's say we've got a three-year annual coupon bond. It's got a coupon rate of 8%, a face value of 1,000. Let's do this in Excel. We'll draw, first of all, a timeline of cash flows, calculate the yield, figure out what uh, yield would actually set the current price of a bond equal to the present value of the cash flows discounted at the yield, and we will see 
uh, that this does then satisfy the definition of a par bond, a bond that whose price is equal to its its face value. All right, so let's calculate the yield to maturity, aka the IRR, uh, for this three-year annual coupon bond. Now, with any fixed income problems, uh, probably the first thing you want to do is make a timeline. Uh, so let's make one here. Uh, we know this bond sells for a thousand, which means that our year zero cash flow is going to be negative one thousand. That's how much we have to spend to buy. Now, what do we get for the next three years? Well, in the first year, we get a coupon of eight percent, aka eighty dollars. Same in the second. And in the last, we get our principal plus a coupon payment. So these are our cash flows. We can compute an IRR. Uh, we need to highlight these values. We can give it a starting value for a guess. 10% is usually a fine one. And if we do, it looks like our answer is 8%. And this is the yield to maturity on this bond. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, you can calculate the uh, yield, assuming you don't worry about accrued interest, using the rate function in Excel. That's sort of the basic yield to maturity calculation, and that'll give you the same results as an IRR calculation in Excel. So now let's look at uh, three bonds. Let's look at an 8% coupon bond that sells for a thousand and we'll assume that all of them have a face value of a thousand. Another bond that sells for 900 and another bond that sells for 1100. How do we actually figure out what the current yield and the yield to maturity on these bonds is? And furthermore, if the yield to maturity is higher, then uh, what must be true about the price? Well, we can already preview the results here. We can see that a bond with a high yield to maturity has a low uh, price and a coupon rate uh, that is below the yield to maturity. Uh, but let's actually calculate these out also. All right, so let's create timelines and yields to maturity for these three bonds. Uh, the cash flows for years one through three are of course going to be the same for all three of them because it's always an eight percent annual coupon bond. Uh, the only difference is going to be what price we pay for. So let's start with the premium bond. Remember for that one we pay a price of $1,100. Well, what is the yield to maturity? Remember that is going to be the IRR of this series of returns. We'll put in our usual guess of 10%. And looks like 4.35, but I think if we expand this out a bit, let's give it two decimal places of precision. 4.37%. So for the premium bond, paste that as a value, with a price of 1100, the yield is 4.3%. What about a par bond? Well, this will be easy enough. We just change the price from 1100 to 1000, and the yield jumps up to 8%. So let's Copy that over. And finally, what about a discount bond? Now this one is only going to cost us 900. And the yield to maturity is 12.18%. price of that is only 900. 
So these are the yields, and let's also compute the current yield. Remember, it's different from the yield to maturity. Uh, the current yield is the coupon divided by the face value. Sorry, by the price. So that's 7.27% for the premium bond. And in fact, if we make that a static reference, we should be able to just drag down to get the analog for the par bond and for the discount bond. Okay, so now what if you have a semi-annual coupon bond? And now in this case, uh, we actually have to take a two-step approach. Um, we'll still calculate the uh, IRR on the bond, the rate of return, but now we have to acknowledge the fact that this IRR is actually the per period IRR. So with annual pay bonds, this was simple. The IRR was, in fact, the annual IRR by definition. With a semi-annual bond, the IRR is going to be uh, the semi-annual one. So then the next step we have to take is to multiply it by 2, and that'll get us the annual percentage rate. And then there's an optional third step that if we want to get real fancy, we can take into account the effect of compounding and calculate an effective annual yield using the effective annual rate formula here. Uh, we can say that uh, this would be the effective annual yield assuming payments from one semi-annual period get compounded over the next one. So let's do an example of this as well. Let's say that we now have a similar three-year bond, but now instead of paying an annual coupon of 80, it pays two coupons per year of 40. So still, the overall coupon is 80, it just gets paid out half twice as frequent. If the price is 900, uh, then what is the yield? Now this bond of course is gonna have a longer timeline because it's a semi-annual bond, so this is a good time to introduce that Excel function rate, uh, which can speed things up a bit because then you don't have to draw the timeline. By the time you start thinking about 20-year bonds, you would probably wish you didn't. So uh, all this needs is just the number of periods. Remember if this is a three-year bond, but with semi-annual payments, number of periods is six. It needs the payment per period. Annual coupon payment is 80, semi-annual is then half of that, or 40. Present value is the price of the bond. We saw that is 900. And the future value is the face value of the bond, which is 1,000. So with these four, let's use the rate function. Number of periods, payment, present value, future value. Calculate that out, 6.04. Now, remember this is the yield to maturity, or IRR, per period. So really, yeah, let's call this IRR for maximal correctness, the yield to maturity is going to be two times that, because that's the yield over the whole year, as opposed to just half year. So about 12.07%. If we want to be super correct, let us format this as a percentage. And then as an additional bonus step, let's say we want to ca calculate the effective annual yield. And remember that means that our per period uh, interest payment of 6% actually compounds. So that is going to be 1 plus the yield to maturity over 2, which means 1 plus 6% to the number of periods, in this case 2, minus 1, 
This is how you calculate the effective annual yield for a semi-annual bond. And then, of course, if you wanted to do quarterly, you would divide your yield to maturity by 4 and exponentiate to the 4th, and so on. And so our effective annual yield is 12.4%.